Hello, I'm Dr. Sam and this is Dr. Sam's Health. In my previous video I've been talking about the three diets that I believe work and make sense to me as to a physician, to someone who tried quite a few things in my life in terms of exercise and dieting and uh, to someone who knows biochemistry and physiology. So I, I promise to you that I would go over every uh, single diet on the list and some diets not included in my future videos and today I was going to work on that but I realized that would be, we would be better off by setting, laying down some uh, good foundation for any future discussions about weight loss, about metabolism by actually talking about metabolism. So today's video will be Metabolism 101 and uh, today we'll talk about what metabolism is, how we can measure it, uh, what are the parts of metabolism that are important to know. So what is metabolism? To put it very very simply, metabolism is the sum of all biochemical processes that are happening in our bodies constantly. Uh, these processes are numerous, there are a whole long 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 list of them uh, but just to give you some examples every time we consume food we have to digest it uh, absorb it then uh, break it down into different uh, macro and micronutrients that have been further on uh, processed in our bodies used as an energy source or being incorporated in new tissues there is constant uh, tissue reparation there are a number of systems of, of our body that uh, are relying on these nutrients and are relying on energy to uh, maintain them fu their function and so on couple of important concepts uh, one of them is uh, you have likely heard about anabolism and catabolism what are these Anabolism is any process uh, that uh, requires or involves uh, building of new tissues. Good example would be building new protein when we are uh, working out and after that uh, our muscles grow. That would be a good example of anabolism. That's why we call uh, steroids anabolic hormones. Catabolism is the opposite of this. Catabolism is breaking down tissues usually to produce some energy. And a good example would be uh, fat mobilization and burning of fat in order to get some energy. How do we measure metabolism? That's a very, very good question. You can see that there are quite a few processes happening there, uh, usually at the same time. And we can actually study each and every component of metabolism, but usually what we really need is a good overall ball, ballpark figure of how we are doing in terms of our metabolism. I'll, I will make an analogy with the, with the state economy. Imagine a country, uh, there is an economy there, there are some individuals, there are companies that are both producing and consuming some goods, there are some regulators, there are some, I don't know, revenue agencies, there are government, there are some social services, there are a number of things happening in each and every state. And when you ask an economist to try to quantify these processes or to describe the whole economy, uh, what they do is usually they convert all the processes that happen in the country's economy into uh, some monetary transactions. So we have produced uh, certain services or, or goods that cost that much. We have spent that much uh, certain amount of resources. Again, we can quantify them. Uh, and Overall, they usually come up with something that is called GDP, which is gross domestic product, and, and it is an amazing indicator of the whole country's economy. As with this example, what we are doing in terms of uh, quantifying metabolism, given you a general description of it, we can actually quantify all uh, metabolic processes based on the amount of energy that was uh, spent or produced as a result of these processes and we can quantify the uh, total metabolism as the amount of energy that was used uh, throughout the day. When we are talking about metabolism and the uh, quantification of different processes uh, we usually talk about calories. So calorie is a unit of energy that we can measure and we can use in order to quantify all these processes. So what is a calorie? Calorie is the amount of energy that is necessary to warm up one gram of water or one milliliter of water by one degree Celsius. 
It's a very simple definition. Uh, in the rest of the science, we actually use uh, joules, and uh, one joule, uh, sorry, one calorie is uh, 4.2 joules. Easy conversion, but since we are talking about like thermodynamics and uh, uh, heat exchange, we we prefer to use calories. It's more traditional way of quantifying energy expenditure and intake in our bodies. Right away, I would like to say that when we are talking about calories, what we mean by calories is something that is in science defined as large calorie. So there are small calories and large calories. Small calorie is what I've just defined, the amount of energy necessary to warm up one gram of, uh, uh, one gram of water by one degree Celsius. Uh, one large calorie is the amount of heat or energy necessary to warm up one liter or one kilogram of water. So effectively one large calorie is thousand small calories. Again, when we're talking about metabolism and we say calorie, we, use, uh, we usually mean large calorie. Uh, they also denote it differently. Uh, calories, small calories are written with small c uh, and large calories are usually denoted as a calorie with a large c, capital C. When talking about metabolism, we usually quantify the amount of energy spent by our body or the sum of processes that are happening in our body in, a, in an caloric equivalent. Uh, at the same time, it's very important to mention, at least mention nutrition here, because nutrition is our main source of energy intake. So uh, every time we consume any food, uh, our body does several things to this food. First of all, we break down this food into micro and macronutrients, then this food has been absorbed uh, and there are certain processes happening to this uh, macro and micronutrients in our body uh, and they are either used as energy sources or they are used as uh, some sort of um, uh, building blocks for our tissues. So I mentioned micro and macronutrients, what are these? Micronutrients are those nutrients who do not play a significant role in uh, energy intake or metabolism, they, they do play a very important role, but the amount of energy you can get from them is really very, very small. We're talking about vitamins, minerals, some other things that uh, are necessary to maintain our, our bodies, but at the same time, they do not get any uh, energy or they yield very small amounts of energy when they have been processed. Uh, macronutrients, just judging from the word macro, they play a significant role in energy intake and energy metabolism. So uh, macronutrients can be broken down into three major categories, which are carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins. At this point, it would be important to mention the caloric um, intake or capacity of different macronutrients. Uh, carbohydrates and proteins yield us up to four large calories per one gram, and uh, fats or lipids uh, yield nine large calories per gram. So fats are way more energy dense. What happens with them in our body after absorption? Uh, proteins are usually used for, they have been broken down to uh, individual amino acids, which are further used as part of uh, multiple proteins all over our body. The good example would be building muscle when we are uh, working out. After that, uh, there is some tissue reparation, building new protein, increasing muscle mass and size. Also, they, they are part of pretty much every single uh, body organ and they are involved in pretty much every single uh, process in our body because uh, most of the enzymes are also proteins. Uh, lipids, they are part of our cell membranes. Each and every cell membrane has lipids in them and uh, they are also used uh, as primary energy source on low carbohydrate diets and uh, they are in general the best, the most compact form of uh, en storing energy in our body. Carbohydrates, uh, they do not have much structural roles uh, in human bodies, but they, they actually can be used and used as structural elements in some tissues. But the very good example of uh, carbohydrates being a structural component would be uh, any plant. They, they have lots of starch, lots, lots of cellulose that actually uh, is a structural element of, of plants. Again, we are 
uh, mammals, humans, uh, they do not play such a significant role and we are using them mostly for quick energy. Also, they can be stored in the form of glycogen uh, and uh, used when needed. Though glycogen is a very large molecule, so it's very uh, inconvenient for our body to store large quantities of glycogen. Usually we can store up to like three to 500 grams of glycogen in our liver and in our, uh, in our muscles. And again, uh, this glucose stored as glycogen, these storages are very small, usually they're enough for uh, less than a day of uh, just maintaining our bodily functions or maybe an hour or two of uh, strenuous exercise. Now, when we have covered our en uh, energy intake and structural components intake, we can talk about the actual energy expenditures. So, what our bodies are doing constantly is, first of all, maintaining our bodily functions. So we have to breathe, our hearts have to beat, our central nervous system has to uh, process information and regulate other organs. There are constant tissue breakdown and reparation and majority of our tissues. So all these processes, they require energy. And we can quantify this basal energy as something that is called basal metabolic rate, uh, which is defined as the, the amount of energy our body has to spend in order to maintain our bodily functions over the course of one day, 24 hours. Some of you have heard about something that is called resting metabolic rate, and uh, that's another indicator. All I have to say is that it's very similar to basal metabolic rate. The difference is in the way it's been uh, studied uh, in the experimental conditions, like in the lab, and they are pretty much uh, identical for our, for our purposes. But if you were a scientist, you could actually differentiate between the two of them. RMR, uh, resting metabolic rate, is usually slightly bigger than uh, BMR, just because there are more uh, functions uh, included into the energy expenditures. The next thing I have on my list is something that is called TDEE, or Total Daily Energy Expenditure. This is the most important parameter for us, because as human beings, as living organisms, we do not just lie down and rest all our lives. No, we have to get this food, we have to find it somehow, we have to at least walk to a store, or in some ancient times we had to hunt for this food, we had to work. Right now we have to work, we have to go to work. Some of us are having very physically demanding jobs. And all these physical activities, uh, they require energy. Also, there are a number of other processes that also require additional energy, additional to the basic functioning. Something, for example, like uh, being emotional. When you're emotional, you're, you're heart rate increases, your breathing uh, becomes more uh, fast. So there, there is also some work happening there and accordingly there is more energy spent too. So uh, there were quite a few experiments where they actually put individuals into a, a very closed uh, environment and they measured the amount of energy that was uh, taken in and the amount of energy that was spent, amount of oxygen that was they came in and out, uh, and so on. So all these experiments, we cannot conduct them on ourselves just because it's like too cumbersome, but uh, all these experiments, they allowed us to uh, come up with certain uh, equations or formulas that allow us to calculate not only our basic met basal metabolic rate, but also something that is called TDE, total daily energy expenditure. And uh, the formula for this is actually quite simple. We just multiply BMR by a specific coefficient, which depends on the amount of energy you uh, spend uh, throughout the day or the amount of physical activity you engage in. I, oh, I think I already gave you this example in my previous video, but I'll repeat it. So, for example, uh, let's assume that my BMR is around 2,000 calories, large calories per day, uh, and uh, I just go to my office, sit there, type in, work on my computer, see a couple of patients without moving a lot, I'm not engaging in any physical activity, so we just check uh, the table of coefficients and it will say that you know for someone who is pretty much resting not doing much physical activity 
uh, this coefficient will be 1.2. So in my case, my uh, TDE would be uh, 2400 uh, large calories, which is my BMR 2000 times 1.2. If I engage in some physical activities, if I uh, jog a little bit, if I work out, if I walk a lot uh, throughout the day, I'm considered to be engaging in moderate physical activity, and then the coefficient will be 155. So my, my TDE will be slightly over 3000 calories per day. That's the gist of it. There are formulas, they are available on the internet, the Wikipedia has a very good page on that. Uh, for your convenience, I would suggest that you just check out uh, the toolbox on my website and we have all these formulas for you already computed them there and all you have to do is just to put in some parameters and pick your level of physical activity and we'll be able to give you the, uh, your projected uh, total daily energy expenditure. And you can use this TDE to uh, plan your diet and your physical activities. I think that this brings us to pretty much the conclusion of today's video because I think we, ha we have actually covered the, uh, the metabolism 101, the basics, what metabolism is, what anabolism, catabolisms are, what uh, micro and macronutrients are, how to calculate your uh, energy intake and uh, energy expenditure. There are also quite a few other things I would like to talk to you, but I will, I will focus on them in my future videos. These things would include uh, talking about the effects of uh, specific diets on your metabolism, or specific macronutrients, how they affect your hormonal levels. The next thing would be talking about actually specific hormones that are involved, such as insulin, glucagon, epinephrine, uh, thyroid hormones, leptin and ghrelin, and so on. Uh, I will make a video for most likely for each and one of them. Also, there are several important concepts that we'll definitely talk about. Something uh, that is called like slowing of your metabolism when you are significantly restricting your energy intake. I'll talk about it in a separate video. Also, there are ways of uh, increasing your metabolism or boosting your metabolism. Uh, I think it also requires a uh, special uh, conversation. Plus, I would like to talk about the effects of um, sleep and physical exercise on, on your uh, metabolism in general. So th that's my plan for the next, I don't know, 10, 15 videos, I guess. I will ask you to leave feedback, leave comments, subscribe so that you can get uh, prompt updates on what we are posting on, on, my, on my blog and on my YouTube channel. Uh, it would be very important for me to actually know what you are interested in and uh, I would be happy to like, look into different issues that you encounter or some uh, items of interest uh, that are interesting for you specifically and I would love to apply my knowledge and my expertise and experience uh, to put everything in perspective and uh, hopefully answer some of important questions for you. I wish you all the best in your personal goals and your body transformation and I will see you in my next video. Bye! I will ask you to leave feedback, leave comments, subscribe so that you can get uh, prompt updates on what we are posting on, on my on my blog and on my YouTube channel. Uh, it would be very important for me to actually know what you are interested in and uh, I would be happy to like look into different issues that you encounter or some uh, items of interest uh, that are interesting for you specifically and I would love to apply my knowledge and my expertise and experience uh, to put everything in perspective and uh, hopefully answer some of important questions for you. I wish you all the best in your personal goals and your body transformation and I will see you in my next video. Bye!